Hello everybody and welcome back to Victoria 2. Let's learn. In this episode we'll be going through this military tab and just a quick note that we won't be going through uh, actual fighting today but we'll be going through how to make a well-rounded army and what that, should, what that should consist of and what a lot of the stats mean within armies. So let's get started right here and look at this panel here. Now as you may have noticed, one of the job types in Victoria 2 that your population can take on is a soldier. And if I scroll in, each province will have a number of soldiers. Now, for every thousand soldiers in a province, that will create one possible brigade that you can create. So you can see right now, we have 48 brigades out of a total of 62. And this is what this number here means. The same thing applies here for Navy. We have 102 ships out of a total... Uh, sorry, 102 ship points, I should say, out of a total 107. Some ships can cost more uh, points than others. But your brigades are just one brigade per unit. So, now you know what this means. And this number right here means if we draft our lower class into the military, you will get 106 extra brigades. And doing this will basically stop all industry and you'll, you'll lose a lot of money while doing it but for 106 brigades it is worth it if you need them. I do recommend that only bringing out your um, conscripts if you're definitely not going to win the war as you are and with a little bit of help you think you might be able to. So that's what this number right here means and again we have officers and officers provide you can see right there 1.64 leadership. And officers, again, are another type of job that your people can do. You can see here, officers are part of the middle class. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty. If we click military, we get brought to this tab. And this tab is very simple in what it is. We have the list of total armies here. You can see we have the Guard Royale. I'm not going to, tap to try and pronounce any of these, really. But these are all our armies, these are all our navies, and you can see right here this picture indicates it is led by someone. You can see right there, right there it's led by General Thomas Harris, and all our generals and admirals, admirals for your navy, appear here. And what happens is over time you will, uh, will get leadership points, you can see right there, uh, if it views up, 1.64. And with those leadership you can buy generals, or you, sorry, you can create generals or admirals from your officers that you have. And right now we have it set to auto create and auto assign. So as soon as enough leadership is accumulated, it will create a general admiral depending on what uh, the AI sees as more needed and then apply it to the best army for it. So this is the generals tab here and we'll go quickly into generals and their stats. So this bar, this little bar right here is prestige. And generals and admirals gain prestige by being in battles and the more battles they win, the more prestigious they become. So you can see right here if we mouse over General Thomas Harris, his prestige is 2.6%. Now background and personality you don't need to worry about because it is reflected in their score. But say hated gives a plus 4 to defence, you can see right there it says plus 4 to defence. So you don't need to worry about background or personality. But with each general comes stats. And you may think right away, well, if there's negative stats on a general, why do I want to use them? And that is because without a general, your army will have much, much, much less good thing. Will will have much more negativity surrounding it than with having a general that's not very good. So it is always best to have a general, even if it's not a good one, because it will improve your army quite a lot. So we have, on this general, for instance, attack plus one, which means... We have a plus one to attack, which is quite self-explanatory. Again, with defense, quite self-explanatory. I'll go into how these numbers actually affect the gameplay when we do a uh, fighting, because right now they are just stats. Morale, which is a negative 18%, and organization, which is plus 1.8, and speed, minus 25%. And speed is how quickly your troops move. And right now we're going to talk about... The reason I didn't mention morale and organization is because it's all here. And we're going to talk about this little tab right here. And this tab shows you all the variables of your army that can change throughout the game depending on technologies researched or events happening. But let's start right now. War exhaustion, as you can imagine, you get from fighting long, long wars. And as this accumulates, 
your army will just become more exhausted, they will, you know, act less than optimal, and they will slowly and slowly get worse. Supply consumption is, like I talked about before, each army has, if I just build an army right now, uh, let me go to an army. Each army, I don't think I'll be able to do this. No, I won't. But, if I just do this, each army, no. <laughs> I'll just try again. Each army has things they will need on a daily basis, such as canned food and ammunition and uh, guns. And while at peace, they only need 50% of what they will normally need because they aren't having to use any of this weaponry. But when in a war, this will increase, and with technology, it will also increase. So if you want a better rounded army, you'll have to supply them with more goods. So this is what supply consumption is. Organization regain. Now the basics of organization is, if I go to my armies, this green bar right here is organization. And organization is basically the, essentially the morale of the army. When fighting, the organization will go down as you are fighting. And when it hits zero, your army will attempt to retreat. So this is not really a factor in smaller wars between less people, but in large wars, say with 40 brigades fighting 40 brigades, they, their organization will run out much quicker than people will die. So organization is very important to keep high on larger groups when you're further in the game. And this can be affected by some technologies in army. You can see right there, organization. And that is what that does. Next we have land and naval, naval organization, which is just the base value of each. It, uh, next we have unit start experience. Now experience is a very key factor to armies and it basically means how much damage they will do. So a more experienced unit will deal more damage and just be generally better. So that's also very important. You can see right now uh, we have 5 out of 5 and you can improve this with uh, technology. Next is recruit time, which is quite self-explanatory. Right now it takes a, a normal amount of time to recruit units and this can go up or down. Now combat width. I'll get more into this when we do battling. But combat width basically means that we can have on our front line 29 different brigades. You can see right now an army is made up of brigades that are in 3,000 sets. So right now we can have 29 brigades on our front line. And this is very important because things like artillery work best when fighting from the second line and infantry can only fight on the front line so having a group full of infantry is not as efficient as having mil uh, infantry on your front line and artillery on your back line because that will deal more damage next we have digging cap which we covered in technology but is essentially if they stay put for so long they will gain defensive bonuses over time and next is military tactics and military tactics is again a very important uh, thing in an army and it basically means The higher this number is the less damage they will receive in battle and if I go to technology It is probably the most important technology in the army field and you can see it's right here. It's under army leadership Military tactics. So that's also a very very important thing to have Now that we've covered what goes into an army stats wise. We're going to cover actually creating an army